Hello, everyone in Coconino County. I'm Eric Peterson, the Director of Public Affairs, and I'm joined today by Sarah Schildecker, our Division Manager for Manager, excuse me, for our Coconino County Health and Human Services. Now, to put it in layman's terms, what Sarah's overseeing, uh, it's really the most important piece of work we're doing right now, and that's our COVID-19 vaccine planning and distribution for Coconino County. Sarah, thanks for being with us. Uh, we know you're very busy, but uh, as we said, it's some of our most important work. Uh, and that moment we've all been waiting for is here. The, Fo the Pfizer uh, COVID-19 vaccine is in route to communities around the county and around the country. Uh, you've been preparing for this for months. Can you tell us a bit about what you've been working on up to this point and what it means for Coconino County to have the vaccine coming? Absolutely. Thank you for having me here today, Eric. We have been planning for a few months, you are right, um, pretty much throughout the entire fall season. We've been working with our local health care providers to prepare them for receiving COVID-19 immunization, which includes getting them onboarded to become a provider so that you can go to your local doctor's office to get your vaccine when it becomes available um, to you and to them. And we've also been doing a lot of education around the vaccine storage and handling with our providers and with other members of the public. And we've been planning a vaccination site, which has taken a lot of effort, but um, we're really excited about the vaccine finally getting here. Um, the FDA's EUA, so their emergency use authorization, it's significant. It's huge for us. We are so excited that Pfizer is coming and that hopefully Moderna will be coming in just a few days also, because this is really um, how we're going to combat this pandemic and curb transmission. The vaccine allows us to gain underlying immunity against COVID-19 without having to be exposed to COVID-19, which means we aren't going to be at risk. Those of us who haven't already had COVID-19, um, we're not going to be at risk for significant illness or even death from COVID-19 thanks to this vaccine. So we're really happy to have a safe, effective way to combat this virus. Great. Well, you know, and you mentioned a couple names there. There's two vaccines that are at the forefront of our effort here, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. Can you tell us about the vaccines, their efficacy, uh, the, what the emergency use authorizations, these acronyms we use always are? Um, and then if, what are any differences? Why, why two? Why not just one? Well, why two? Why, why not just one? There, there's actually more than two. So there are other vaccines in development. And the, the, I'll start with that. The reason why there are multiple vaccines is that um, the government put money towards research and development of COVID-19 vaccine. And we're not always sure that when one company does it, that their technology will be the one that makes it and makes an effective vaccine. So it, it's helpful to have several different vaccines in the pipeline so that we're assured that at least we end up with one that works, right? So the two vaccines that we have coming out are a new type of vaccine. They're called mRNA vaccines, also known as messenger RNA. And it's a new technology that we haven't used in immunization before. But we're really excited about this new technology because they're very quick to develop, which made it a great vaccine candidate um, for this pandemic. It was very good for getting an EUA, but they're also safe. And the reason for that um, all vaccines are safe. They wouldn't be approved if they weren't safe, but they're extra safe because they're actually not injecting you with a virus, not a live virus, not even um, a virus that's been killed in a laboratory. This is just a little bit of genetic instructions that get inserted into your body, and it tells your body how to make a harmless protein that looks like COVID-19. So it's a protein that's found on the virus, but it's not a protein that can hurt you. And once your body sees that protein, it produces the antibody that's going to protect you against real life infection um, when you're exposed in the real world because your body knows how to recognize something that looks like COVID-19. So we're really excited about these two vaccines. Um, so that's kind of the how it works on the back end. They both have demonstrated at least 95% efficacy against um, both infection from COVID-19 and long-term consequences um, or severe outcomes, I should say, of COVID-19. So hospitalization and death is what we're talking about there. So the vaccine has been shown to reduce both infection and severe outcomes. It is being licensed for and recommended to be used in those 16 and older. There are a few safety precautions, um, just like a severe history of anaphylaxis. Um, that, that would be a reason not to get a vaccine, but that would be a reason not to get any vaccine. 
So if, if you've tolerated vaccines in the past, you should tolerate co the COVID-19 vaccine just fine. Um, they did look at safety data over a median of two months. Uh, there weren't any other differences. Again, like the, the side effects we're seeing with this vaccine or what we see with other vaccines, such as maybe a little bit of injection, site redness, swelling, irritation. Um, worst case, you might have a fever for a couple of days, and that's just your body recognizing that something's going on, your immune system getting kicked up into gear. And, and, and in some ways, it's a good sign because it means that your immune system is doing what it's supposed to be doing in producing the right reaction so you'll be protected in the future. It is important to note that this isn't um, a typical timeline for vaccine licensure. So an under an emergency use authorization, um, it's a very short timeline. That's why we only have a couple months of this data before getting the EUA, um, but we are in an emergency. So we we have to balance the, the safety and the risks associated with a new medical intervention. And in this case, um, the FDA did that and they said, you know, at any of the potential risks from this vaccine are far outweighed by the potential benefits. And so they've issued the EUA. Great. Well, you know, um, as I've watched the news and heard uh, some of the information that uh, people talk about, I mean, getting the majority of the American population vaccinated is complex. I mean, we have to keep this vaccine at a proper temperature, which requires certain equipment, and there's two doses of the vaccine. Um, it, it seems really complicated, exceptionally so. What can you know the public, I mean, we're preparing for that at the county, but what can the public do, those who are watching us today, to help us support this effort and make it successful uh, from their part? Well, it takes all of us to be successful. I think we've seen that um, in this pandemic more than ever, that it takes everyone wearing a mask to help um, prevent transmission, airborne transmission. But but here, we, we need everyone to be a part of this, to please be patient. Please follow the guidance from CDC and ADHS. Um, the reason it's coming out in phases is really to, it, it's based on a risk assessment. So we want to prioritize the people who are at highest risk um, and protecting our critical healthcare infrastructure first and make sure that they um, are protected against the vaccine because then they're not going to get it as part of their job and they're not going to transmit it to other people coming in to those healthcare um, organizations for, for care. So it really helps provide that barrier by immunizing our healthcare workers. So the phases are designed to maximize the effective impact of the vaccine because we can't all get it at once. So we need to um, recognize that, that there's a strategy behind this and it's an important one that's going to help all of us stay healthier um, on a population level by curbing transmission. Um, when you do get eligible for the vaccine, and I, and I hope everyone listening here who can get the vaccine will get the vaccine, make sure that you get the second dose. Uh, make sure you come back for that second dose because that second dose is going to boost you up to that 95% efficacy that you hear quoted in the news. One dose will give you some protection, but you really need to. Um, and in the meantime, and even after you're immunized, keep wearing a mask, keep washing hands, keep social distancing, staying home when sick because we need enough people to be immunized before we can say that all those measures are done and we, we need to reach that herd immunity threshold and that's going to take some time. Um, but really the combination of the immunization and all the other prevention methods is going to afford you and your loved ones the best protection against COVID. You know, we are going to be doing a lot of work with press releases and helping people to get information about the vaccine as it becomes available. But how do people know when they're eligible, when it's their phase and when they should show up to be vaccinated? It's a great question and it's an important question, Eric. We will be posting general information um, regarding priority group vaccination um, recommendations uh, via social media on our website um, and any other sort of public venues that we can get that information out in. However, um, for this first phase of phase 1A and if um, phase 1B also ends up including essential workers, we're going to be working directly with employers. So if you're eligible for a vaccine, you may hear about it from us or you may hear about it from your employer because we are going to be coordinating those clinics directly with um, the eligible employers. Moving forward into phases like 1C where we're talking about high risk individuals and those with underlying health conditions, that's not gonna be coordinated through an employer. So you would wanna check back on our website. You can always email COVID vaccination at coconino.az.gov to find out more, but 
we will be waiting for those official national recommendations and you'll likely see those in the news first. Um, so that could be your first cue that you're going to be eligible soon. Uh, we are working on establishing that um, immunization site that I talked about earlier, and that's going to be at the Fort Tuthill County Park. So we will be operating there during phase one, and um, it's not going to be in the same area as the testing. It's going to be in a separate area, but uh, it's a it's a known location um, that people have become familiar with. So we are going to be doing the immunizations there. OK, you know, we, we've talked a lot about the vaccine. Uh, and we mentioned the timeline. It's new. Some people are really hesitant to get this vaccine because it's new. Uh, what's your message to those people about the safety of this uh, and what should be done? You know, it's it's understandable um, to be a little hesitant when something's new. Um, this is a new vaccine, but my message would be that we're combating a new virus, a novel coronavirus that has demonstrated the potential to cause serious illness and even death um, throughout the world. So these are new times and with a new vaccine, um, with a new virus, I should say, comes a new vaccine. Uh, we have to weigh in public health um, the potential risks associated with any outcome. So we're looking at the risk of an individual getting COVID-19 versus the risk of a potential side effect from a vaccine. And that's what CDC and the FDA are doing as well. And when you put those two side by side, um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the risk of, of with this vaccine is just completely negligible compared to the risk of COVID-19. Um, if you've had a vaccine in the past, you likely know what you're going to get with this vaccine. And as I talked about earlier, it, it can't make you sick, so you don't need to worry about getting COVID-19 from the vaccine. The FDA would not have issued this approval if it hadn't gone through rigorous safety and efficacy trials. So, you know, I'm, I'm very confident in Coconino County. We're very confident in this vaccine. Um, so we just we just ask people to take that risk and, and to jump out and to get the vaccine, knowing that it has been um, evaluated at a very high level and demonstrated to be safe and effective. Great. So Sarah, as we prepare for the vaccine to come, what are some of well, the final messages that you want to share with the residents here of Coconino County? You know, the, the main message is just, um, and I know I've said this before, to be patient, to hang in there. It, this has been a really long few months for all of us and um, it's not over yet. So just because we start immunizing a few people doesn't mean that the pandemic is over and that we can stop all those primary prevention practices that we've gotten really used to, like washing our hands and wearing a mask and social distancing. We want people to continue to do that as immunization rolls out because that's going to provide the greatest protection on a population level and on an individual level. So we ask you to get the vaccine when you become eligible and to keep practicing those primary prevention methods. And uh, we're really confident that those um, methods combined, all of those are really going to be what stops this pandemic. Sarah, I want to thank you and I want to thank you for the information that you've given uh, for the residents of Coconino County, for all of you who are watching and listening and waiting with bated breath on the COVID-19 vaccine here in the county. We will have uh, frequently asked questions and uh, resources and information for you on the website at coconino.az.gov slash COVID-19 vaccine. We have much more information to come and we really encourage you to get vaccinated as it is uh, your turn uh, in the phases uh, with uh, this, this vaccine that has become available. Sarah, thank you and thank you to everyone who joined us today for this great information. Thank you so much, Eric.